Hello and welcome. In this video we are taking a look at portfolio optimization with Python. Instead of stocks we are considering coins and answering two questions. First, what is the best cryptocurrency in terms of modern portfolio theory? And second, what would be the optimal portfolio of cryptocurrencies? Here we are considering two different optimization criteria. First, the maximum Sharpe ratio and second, the minimum volatility. To better follow along, you should have a basic understanding of modern portfolio theory. I will link a video in the description. Okay, so let's get started. I assume you have installed those two libraries. This is the optimization library and this library enables us to pull historical price data from Binance. Here I'm just importing some necessary libraries and instantiate the client. Next, I want to pull daily price data over the last three years. Therefore, I'm copy pasting a function from my other screen, which I have covered in many previous videos. But anyhow, I will go over that real quick with you together. So this function is pulling K-line data, open, high, low, close data for a given symbol. Let's say Bitcoin USDT on the one day interval and it's going three years back. This is just slicing for the relevant columns. So this is the timestamp and this is the close price. Here I'm just renaming the columns to timestamp and the symbol name. So this would be BTC USDT in the Bitcoin case. And this is setting the index of that data frame to the timestamp column. And finally, this is just transforming the currently string formatted close price values into floating values so we can calculate with them. So let me just show you how this function is working. If we are calling that for the Bitcoin USDT, you will see that we are getting daily price data over the last three years for the Bitcoin. So this is a Unix timestamp. You can convert that to a human readable timestamp. I've covered that in other videos, but it should be fine for now. Next, we just want to create a list of cryptos we are interested in and pull price data for them. So let's get rid of that for now and let's define a list of cryptos. I'm just copy pasting again. So Let's call that symbols and we are taking the Bitcoin, ETH, Binance Coin, Ripple and Cardano, just as an example. Now we are pulling price data by defining an empty list here. And now loop over this symbols here for symbol in symbols. And we are just appending to this empty list and call our get daily data function on that symbol. All right, so this might take some seconds here and we are ending up with a list looking like this here. So we have data frames of those coins. So we have historical prices for all those coins. So we wanna, yeah, concat this data and pull that all in the data frame. We can use the concat function to achieve that, provide the prices list and concat on the axis one. And with that, we are getting a beautiful data frame like this containing the coin names here as the columns and the timestamp as the rows. All right, let's continue with calculating the efficient frontier. Therefore, we have to import some stuff from the Pi Portfolio Optimization Library, namely Efficient Frontier, Risk Models, Expected Returns and Plotting. Now, first of all, we are calculating the so-called mu, which is just the mean historical return. So we can use expected returns, mean historical return and provide our data frame. But we have to do one more amendment here, which is amending the frequency. The default argument is 252 trading days, which makes sense when considering stocks. But as you can trade cryptocurrencies all year long, we have to amend that to 365 trading days. 
With that, we are getting the mean historical returns for all those coins, right? And next, we wanna define our sigma, which is the volatility. And first of all, we are uh, generating the covariance matrix using risk models. Take the sample cough, provide the data frame, and again, amend the frequency to 365. And with that, we are getting a covariance matrix. As you see here, just a reminder, the diagonal of the covariance matrix is just the variance of the asset itself. But we will come to that in some seconds again. Okay, with mu and sigma, we can calculate the efficient frontier, defining EF and use efficient frontier on mu and sigma. And with that, we can plot the efficient frontier using plot efficient frontier here, provide EF and show the assets besides the efficient frontier line. And with that, we're getting a plot like this. So the y-axis is containing the returns and the x-axis is containing the volatilities. Okay, so before we are moving on improving this chart, let's quickly discuss the meaning out of that. So we have the least volatility on that coin here, whatever that is. And we have the highest return on this coin here, all right? And this line is the efficient frontier. We have, let's say this one, this is a good example. We have the same level of risk here. So these have roughly the same volatility, but we have a coin which has a higher return on that level of volatility, right? So this coin won't be a good idea. And same for this coin. This coin is a very bad idea because you have a very high level of risk, the highest volatility actually, and a very low return. Okay, so let's move on improving this chart by labeling those dots with the respective coin. Therefore, we have to find out the exact amount of return and volatility for each coin. So first of all, we are pulling the tickers and with that, we are just getting the coin names. Then we can pull the expected returns like that and get an array of the expected return for each of those uh, ticker names or coin names. And last but not least, and this is a bit more challenging, is find out the volatility. So we are pulling the covariance matrix and as I said some minutes ago, the diagonal of the covariance matrix is the variance of the asset. So we can just pull the diagonal of this and get the variances. And we just need to take the square root out of that to get the standard deviations or the volatilities. All right, so this is the array of volatilities or standard deviations. Now we are using this to label those dots here. Before plotting, you have to instantiate the efficient frontier again, otherwise you're running into an error message. Let's get rid of this. And finally create a more meaningful plot. So the base logic is we are just assigning those values to the y and x coordinate here. Therefore, first of all, we need matplotlib. I forgot to import that in the very beginning. And then we are creating a subplot here. Subplots use plotting plot efficient frontier. Again, provide EF, set x to x, show assets. And now we are looping for i, text, in, enumerate, EF tickers, use x, annotate, and now provide the text we wanna annotate. And we're just taking text with just the symbol. And we have to provide the x and y coordinates now. So 
X coordinates are the volatilities. So we can just use this one here. Set two opening parentheses here and index for the for the loop uh, iterator here and same for the expected returns. Right, so we are just looping over all volatilities and expected returns for all those S's here, nothing more than that. Okay, close the parentheses and see what we got. An error here, let's find out. Yeah, and this error message I meant in the beginning. So this is happening when you are not instantiating the efficient frontier again. Why so ever? I cannot explain that to you, but it's happening if you're not instantiating once again here. So if I'm executing that now, you see that we are getting the plot with the names. So interestingly, you see that Ripple is probably the worst investment, just considering modern portfolio theory, right? And we have the least volatility for Bitcoin and the highest return for the Binance coin, BNB. And we see that the Binance coin, what I just said, is on the same level or roughly the same level of risk, but is cheating in a higher return here, right? So quite interesting results. Of course, you can provide way more uh, symbols here. Let's actually do that quickly. So... Let's just add some more here. So I'm copy pasting from my other screen. Of course, we have to pull prices again. Then this stays the same just have to execute everything again here very important instantiate the efficient frontier and execute this one again and yeah this is quite insane right by the way, please note here that for a lot of those altcoins, you have missing data because they're just not as long existent as the established coins. Anyhow, let's move on with calculating the optimal portfolio. Let me quickly clean up this notebook for you. Okay, so back to the beginning. This stays the same, function stays the same. We are considering the established coins here again. So Bitcoin, ETH, BNB, Ripple, and Cardano. Pulling the prices again, form a data frame out of this. Importing stuff from the Pi portfolio optimization library. Define mu and sigma. And create an, or calculate an efficient frontier. Providing mu and sigma. And now we want to determine which coins and what share we have to invest into these coins to have an optimal portfolio maximizing the Sharpe ratio. Therefore, we are defining weights and use max Sharp. And we are getting the weights. So we should invest 31% into ETH, 62% into BNB and 6% into Cardano. Interestingly, nothing into Bitcoin and Ripple. Now let's take a look at the portfolio performance. So the portfolio consisting of those assets with those weights. This would have an expected annual return of 210% roughly and an annual volatility of roughly 100% and a sharp ratio of 2.1. Now let's take a look at the minimum volatility. So we are instantiating the efficient frontier newly and take a look at the min for the utility. Now, not surprising and in alignment to what we saw some minutes ago, we have a very large share 
which should be invested into Bitcoin, 92%, right? 2% into BNB, 5% into Ripple, and the remainder into uh, Cardano. Now let's take a look at the portfolio performance of this portfolio. This would have an expected annual return of 117%, 75% volatility, and a sharp ratio of 1.5%. And yeah, that's already it. So yeah, be invited to play a bit around with that. I hope this was interesting or adding value for you. And yeah, thank you very much for watching. And I'm looking forward to seeing the upcoming videos. Bye-bye.